Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us for the JICA COVID-19 webinar series, sharing our Japanese experiences. My name is Yumeka Ota from Office of uh, COVID-19 Response, JICA. In this webinar series, we are going to invite various leading professionals and researchers in Japan to share Japanese knowledge and experiences on COVID-19 response. In today's fifth webinar, we focus on antigen detecting rapid diagnosis tests for COVID-19. Before we start, please allow me to cover a few housekeeping topics. Language, this webinar is being held in English and French. An interpretation function is available on the interpretation button. So please select the language of your choice for you to enjoy the discussion. Q&A session, please do not hesitate to ask questions to the speaker through the Q&A function. We would like to have discussion time as much as possible. So we will be delighted to have your comments and questions during and after the speaker's presentation. Please reminder, uh, remember using Q&A function for writing question, not chat box, not chat box. We are going to record today's webinar and upload the video on the YouTube channel of JICA Ogata Research Institute later. We have uploaded the speaker's presentation slides in the cloud for your reference. You can find access information in the reminder email we sent one hour ago, as well as chat box. Please kindly be reminded that reproducing all or any parts of its contents is prohibited. Again, I'd like to welcome all of you to today's webinar. And I'd like to invite Mr. Takizawa Ikuo Senior Director of Office for COVID-19 Response of JICA for opening remarks and the introduction of speakers. Mr. Takizawa, I would like to hand over to you. Um, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Iko Takizawa. Uh, I am the Senior Director of the Office of for COVID-19 Response of JICA. And I want to welcome all the participants who are connected in the spirit of solidarity today. We are so proud that, um, and thankful that our partner institutions and colleagues are at the forefront of leading national efforts to control the pandemic. And last summer, we launched JICA's Initiative for Global Health and Medicine under the strong leadership of President Kitaoka to double down our effort to protect the lives of the people in the world through our bilateral programs with focus on three pillars, which is prevention, precaution and treatment. And globally, we are supporting 70 countries in the fight against the pandemic, which includes $30 billion of concessional loan uh, extended in the form of general budget support to mitigate the macroeconomic and budgetary uh, stress and provision of over $30 million of essential material and technical assistance to help boost uh, emergency response by our partner institutions. As part of the initiative, we are stressing knowledge sharing as well through webinar series like this one. In addition to the lessons learned from our own experience dealing with the situation over the past year, we also uh, want to share with you some of the uh, latest innovations coming out of Japan as pictured. And today's focus is on, on uh, innovation in diagnostics. Now, one of the most reliable tests for COVID-19 is, of course, a PCR. I want to acknowledge here that many of our partner institutions spearheaded the PCR scale up in their countries, such as uh, Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research in Ghana, which performed 80% of national PCR testing in the early stage of pandemic when national capacity is still under development. Now, thanks to the coordinated effort a PCR testing capacities increased significantly in many countries. Innovations are coming out in PCR and other nucleic acid-based testing as well. However, 
I would like to invite your attention today to the public health value of rapid uh, antigen tests. Despite being lower in sensitivity compared to PCR, of course, frequent application of adequately sensitive rapid antigen tests can actually be an effective strategy for controlling the disease by identifying asymptomatic yet infectious patient early and facilitating prompt quarantine. How does it work? Now let us uh, invite our panel of experts and listen to what they have to say. Um, with that, I would like to uh, introduce today's uh, speakers. Uh, first, we have Professor uh, Katsunori Yanagihara. Uh, he's a professor uh, at the Nagasaki University Graduate School of Biomedical Science, and he's head of laboratory medicine, Nagasaki University Hospital as well. He specializes in uh, infectious diseases, clinical microbiology, and laboratory medicine. And next, we have a partner from uh, private sector, Mr. Koji Oi. Uh, he's um, from uh, Medical Systems Business Division, uh, in vitro diagnostics group of Fujifilm uh, Corporation. And lastly, but not least, we have uh, Dr. Mitsuo Isono, who's a visiting fellow at the uh, JICA Ogata Research Institute. So please enjoy today's seminar. Thank you. Can I start my presentation? Thank you for your opening remarks. And now we want to start the first part of the program. And I'd like to invite Professor Yanagihara from Nagasaki University, the Graduate School of Biomedical Science. So uh, I'd like to hand over to uh, you, uh, Professor Yanagihara. Okay, uh, thank you for introducing me, uh, Mr. Takizawa. And uh, thank you for attending this JICA COVID-19 seminars. So we would like to talk about the uh, Japanese experiences, also that uh, how antigen detecting, detecting rapid test will change the course of COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Katsunori Yanagihara from Nagasaki University. My specialty is infectious diseases, also laboratory medicine, also clinical microbiology. Uh, this slide shows WHO organization homepage. As you know, COVID-19 suddenly appeared in Wuhan, China in end of 2019 and has spread all over the world. Now, we are concerned about that uh, pandemic problem. And I'm showing that uh, one typical mild case. This is at the 30th May. Okay, just a just moment. The 30th and that the condition is non noted. Uh, he attended that the kind of the family gathering and that the one people joining that party. And the, he developed that the calf on the eighth of month X and with both fever and fever 38 Celsius and di diarrhea on the ninth of month. He visited the local doctor and also the fever and he was found to be a SARS coronavirus 2, PCR positive on the 17th month X, and admitted, admitted to the our hospital. Uh, this is the chest X ray. Uh, as you can see, the day on the admission, you can see that the, around here are uh, very small and grand glass opacity. However, that the day six, you can see that the right lung, also that the left lung, you can see that the small nodular shadow or a glandular opacity. That means that the viral pneumonia. I think that the chest CT is, is used as easy to understand. You can see that the day six, 
around here, uh, this black area is a norma, and this white area is that uh, indicated the pneumonia. Also, this is a typical shadow of viral pneumonia. This is a severe case. As you can see, this, uh, this is a chest X-ray. This white area indicated that the shadow of viral pneumonia. So most area had a shadow. It's a very serious cases. Fortunately, he was survived by our treatment. But as you know that uh, this extra coronal membrane oxygenation is that uh, something that a good tool to save the patient. We use uh, the ECMO to save the patient. Uh, this slide show importance of laboratory testing. Now, therapeutic drug or a vaccine has been developing. You know that the vac vaccination has started already, but not yet. So it is most effective to diagnose and isolate patient by testing. So we have a three test for detecting coronaviruses, genetic testing, antigen testing, and antibody, antibody testing. This is a structure of a uh, SARS coronavirus and laboratory testing. This is membrane protein, embrane, embedded protein. This RNA is a target for genetic testing. Also, that the uh, nuclear capsid protein is target of antigen testing. You know that uh, for antibody testing, spike protein or a nuclear capsid protein is a target for antibody testing. This is that uh, some show that, that is some kind of the my intro uh, into myself. I'm the chair of the uh, Japanese Society of Laboratory Medicine, ad hoc, ad hoc committee on novel coronavirus. It's the member of seven medical doctors and three medical technologists. So we generate some guideline as a method and we publish some data. I'm showing that uh, genetic or nucleotic testing. So methods increase in detecting genes by technique such as PCR. Another method, LAMP or TRC, but uh, PCR is the most popular method for genetic testing. Advantage, it can detect even extremely small quantity with high sensitivity. This advantage is it requires special equipment and the procedure is complicated and it's powered by skilled clinical laboratory test technician and most uh, serious problem is that it takes time. This is, this is a flowchart of RT-PCR testing. First, we do specimen pro, pre proceeding processing. And after that, RNA extraction preparation and RNA extraction and PCR preparation and PCR. So we have five steps to complete PCR. And about it takes about three to five hours for four processes. Now we have another, we, we developed the, another rapid method. So we have to have, we have to wait at least three hours. This is the, the absolute uh, quantification test. So you can see that the PCR, this is a 10, 10 to the power of seven. This is some control standard numbers. And uh, you can see the X axis means that the CT value. As you know, high CT value around here indicated a low viral load. 
and low city city body city cycles indicated high viral load please remember that this is a automatic genetic testing equipment uh, i think that uh, some of the attended using the same method so this is uh, from the uh, united states this is at uh, european countries this is at uh, japanese company so we have some for the automated genetic testing equipment uh, some uh, so it is also useful for that the PCR testing. We move to the antigen testing. Advantage, it produces that uh, quick and easy results about 30 minutes. No special equipment is required. There are also equipment use usage testing. It can be performed anywhere. This advantage is it can detect pathogens unless there are a lot of certain extent, also low sensitivity. This is the data from the, the antigen testing. As you can see, overall much late 75%. And uh, it, it's indicated that uh, its sample has a lot of virus. The sensitivity is higher. But uh, you can see that uh, less than 30 copies per test, the sensitivity is low. It is the um, future of antigen testing. This is a similar data from the, the paper, as I mentioned. A city value, low city value around here means high balance load. So antigen test is the indicated high sensitivity. To the other hand, this 30 to 40, it's at a high city value, means that the low viral load, the sensitivity is get lower. This is that the Japanese, uh, Japanese product, Japanese product are listed. As you can see that uh, it's as it's one, two, three, eight product. And you can see much rate is uh, lowest one at the 50 and the highest one is 78. So I think that the sensitivity is 60 to 60 to 70 and, and that the negative match rate specificity is high. This is the uh, future of antigen testing. Also, this is at the also Japanese data from that the quantitative region for detecting SARS coronavirus antigen. It is not uh, immunochromatography, it's at the chemiluminescence. As I mentioned, it use a machine, some machine. So, uh, it's some machine is needed for the, the quantitative testing. I explain that. This is the CLEIA and immunochromatography assay. Immunochromatography is just a simple antigen test. That the CLIA is that the use machine. As you can see that the this is that uh, use machine, and this is a simple one. As you can see, that uh, 48 sample, 48 men's sample, CLEIA positive, but uh, ICEA was negative. That indicates the difference that uh, CLEIA and ICEA. Uh, also, that the similar data, so we can see that uh, this. Novel coronavirus antigen kit is at the PCR. So it's at the Lumipalus, means that the CLEI method. As you can see, that the 18 sample, PCR positive, but CLEIA negative. It is the difference between the PCR and the CLEI method. Okay, back to that. Uh, 
antigen uh, testing, rapid antigen testing, that uh, you, I, I think that uh, uh, you experienced to see, uh, we, have, we mentioned that the uh, eight Japanese product is, is not Japanese one, but uh, similar. You can see that the control line, testing line, the sample. This is a uh, uh, example for antigen testing, immunochromatography assay. So how do I use that uh, immunochromatography assay, rapid antigen testing? Uh, we, are, we are showing that uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, Dr. Mina mentions there are three major challenges with COVID-19. A significant number of asymptomatic patients and with increased cases, we need to identify and isolate infectious individuals to create safe community or safe bubble. Rapid, decentralized, and large-scale screening cannot be achieved with RT-PCRs because that uh, we have to, we, if we, we do RT-PCR with the equipment and that the medical technologist and area. So we, we need to prepare so many things. But if we do immunochromatography, antigen testing, just we need the antigen test. Also, that the strategy for contaminant. This is that the viral load. And antigen test is that the limit of detection is 10 to the power of 5. So sensitivity lower than PCR. PCR uh, of detect, limited detection is 10 to the power of 3. This light slide show. So the Mr. Uh, Mr. Takizawa mentioned frequency is important to control COVID-19. As you can see, this is that uh, uh, this uh, that the less sensitive test like antigen. If you do every day, we can remove all patients. But uh, if you do the PCR once per week, 60% of patients is removed. That indicated that uh, uh, we do the antigen test every day, very effective to remove, find the patient. This is similar data, it's a delay it's, it's that uh, this, the more sensitive test, uh, less sensitive test. So if you do, if the, we do that the weekly, I mentioned, uh, we do the PCR test weekly. So the, the delay of happens. So with this finding, the authors concluded for symptomatic patient, so self-isolation, sensitivity is necessary. So suitable test is high sensitivity, is that uh, we have to use at the PCR. But uh, a symptomatic patient, time to results, frequent testing, rapid test, antigen is useful or suitable for the patient. It's uh, there conclusion. And this is a viral load and low analytical sensitivity, high antigen sensitivity. If you, if you, we do low analytical sensitivity every day, it's effective. So it, it's, it, it's writing that the daily or once every three days can eliminate 85 to 100% of infected people. This is the data. I moved to that uh, viral culture. So that means that the live virus and dead virus. So we will introduce that uh, this data. 
they do a live virus and the dead virus, and they do the, the PCR test and viral culture and antigen testing. This is the data. This is a the positive predicted value and something like that. That just just you can focus that. This is the culture negative and to test the positive uh, number. Antigen test means that uh, uh, the culture negative test is just three patients, but uh, RT PCR data indicate that uh, they Ten sample uh, is not that uh, PCR positive, but culture negative. That means that uh, PCR detect that uh, dead virus or particle or viruses. This is also interesting data from that uh, culture antigen testing. They they perform that uh, correlation between that. Uh, antigen test and viral culture. This yellow, yellow band indicated that the antigen test and violet band indicated that the culture positive. So most cases are overlapped. That means that the antigen test detect uh, live viruses. Also, this is uh, another data. This uh, x-axis is a uh, culture positive and culture negative. And um, red point indicate antigen test positive and green dot, green dot indicated antigen test negative. As you can see that the antigen test positive most of antigen test positive are culture positive. And most of antigen test negative is culture negative. That also, they, that they found that the correlation between antigen testing and virus culture positivity, okay? And also that uh, I got a uh, JICA group and the possible problem or COVID-19 testing. If you want to do PCR or CLEIA assay, so you have to use machine. So that uh, the that, uh, shortage and medical equipment and supply shortage or medical equipment specimen. And so a lot of, lot of equipment or a lot of things have to be prepared to do PCR or CRE assay. Also, if if we have to if we transport that the specimen to that area of PCR, so temperature control and influence from other products, so we have to uh, overcome uh, several problems. Also, that the test of border points. It's also that the very difficult standardization and registration delays and something. Uh, we have a uh, lot of problem to do that the PCR CL assay. Uh, this is the last slide. Uh, how do I use uh, antigen test? So antigen tests are useful for COVID-19 screening. As you can see, you know that the uh, PCR is that uh, has a very high sensitivity. That's really nice. I I don't doubt it's at the standard and best method for PCR to detect the COVID nineteen, but the rapidity is not good and the cost is high. Rapid antigen testing uh, sensitivity is not not so high. It's uh, kind of low. But the rapidity is very good and the cost is low. It's very useful. So I think that the frequency is most important than sensitivity COVID-19 screening. So I would like to say 
frequency is an important, uh, more important than sensitivity. So please let the use antigen test to control COVID-19. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for Professor Yanagihara for sharing your valuable insights and experience focusing on COVID-19 tests, especially antigen tests as compared to PCR tests. Next, we will move on to the next presentation. I'd like to invite Mr. Oi from Fuji Helium Corporation. He, he, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Oi. All right, so hello everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, so let me share my screen. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Kojo Lee from Fujifilm headquarters in Japan. And I'm leading the project of this COVID-19 antigen kit here in Fujifilm Tokyo and supporting worldwide sales team. Okay. So to Jake the team, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce our team today in this important webinar. Okay. Okay. So let me start uh, to explain a little bit about the health film healthcare overall businesses. As you can see in green part. Uh, we have a broad medical product, starting from X-ray, mammography, and endoscopy, ultrasound, and medical IT system, and my team in vitro diagnostic. And for IBD, for IBD, so we got the clinical chemistry product. Uh, both for wet chemistry for big hospital labs and also dry chemistry system for POCT setting and also some immunosis and some cancer biomarkers and lastly the infectious disease related product which I will explain today. Okay so let's move on to our COVID-19 antigen kit. So this is an overview of our kit. So one box has the 10 kits and it comes with the swabs and the extraction tube. I think it's almost the same with other brands. And we got EMDA Japanese certification and also European CE IBDD. And basic feature is it's shown here that easy, no reason needed, and rapid. The result in about 10 minutes and a sample on the sophalangeal. And what's special and unique about the kit is that we utilize our Fujifilm propriety silver amplification technology, which I will explain next slide. Okay. So what, what is silver amplification technology? So this slide shows how uh, what it is and how it works inside the kit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So please look around here. So we, we have two steps. And step one, so this is a test line inside the kit. And there's a capture antibody coated around here. And the sample goes like this, okay? And if the sample has antigen in it, we capture the antigen with, between capture antibody and labeled antibody and make kind of sandwiches, okay? And with normal antigen kit, the process is done here. And we just see the result by looking at the line, if there's a line or not. But our kit is different. We got step two. And by adding AG ion like this, and we actually amplify it by the 100 times bigger. Okay. So it's like, uh, please imagine when you're walking on the street, there's a tiny sesame seed on the street, 
maybe you cannot find it, you cannot even recognize it. But if you can amplify it, as big as watermelon, like this on the street, you can easily find it. So that is our technology, silver amplification technology. With that technology, we enhance the visibility of the virus and achieve the high sensitivity of the antigen kit. Okay, so that is our technology. Okay, this, this is the test procedure. It's quite simple. First, take sample and put it in the extraction tubes and put one drop in the center of the kit. And you push first bottom and wait for 10 minutes. And once the goal next turns orange, you push second bottom. Then you can get result in one minute, in total about 10 minutes. Okay. So let me, let me stop here. And before I move on to the detailed clinical data, uh, let me show you two minutes video to kind of summarize my explanation so far. At Fujifilm, the safety of patients is always our priority. Fujifilm has therefore created a highly sensitive antigen test for increased accuracy. The Fujifilm COVID-19 AG test provides you with a quick and highly sensitive test result for an early diagnosis. For a good diagnosis, the virus is detected from a nasopharyngeal swab. Place the swab down to the bottom of the test tube with the extraction reagent. Squeeze the test tube gently and rotate the swab 10 times clockwise and counterclockwise. The sample is now ready. Add one drop to the cartridge. and press 2 to start. After 10 minutes, the mark turns orange and press 3 to start the silver amplification process. The silver amplification process, derived from photodeveloping technology, leads to improved detection sensitivity of viral antigens. The so-developed Fujifilm's antigen test kit that can rapidly and sensitively examine the presence of SARS coronavirus 2 antigens in specimens, detecting the virus at an early stage and quickly provides you with a clear result. Fujifilm COVID-19 AG test. Enhanced sensitivity using Fujifilm's amplification technology for increased accuracy. Innovation never stops and we will never stop innovating for a healthier world. Fujifilm, value from innovation. Okay, all right, thank you for watching the video. So I hope that this video would help you understand our technology and the product itself, okay? So let me start my second part, okay. So this is the data, actually the result from the clinical study that we did in Japan with the, one of the major university, the Yokohama City University. Actually, this the, 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 the data is already online as a preprint. So if you are interested, please check there. So this is the, the basically the correlation between uh, with the PCL and antigen kit, Fujifilm and LOSH and Fuji Radio Japan and Albert. Okay. And as you can see that the PPA, meaning the sensitivity is, our kit is 82, and ours is like uh, less than 80 or 70 or 64. So we are the highest. And as for the NPT, the sensitivity is all 100%. Okay. So that is a kind of average score from the study. But I guess that just looking at these numbers doesn't look much difference between brands. So please look at the next slide. This one is about the sensitivity comparison by CT value. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see around here, the CT value less than 23 or CT value 23 to 27, the kind of the high viral load segment. The all brands, 
her sensitivity is very high, 100 or at least over 70%. But when you look at the CD value 27 to 31, the hour sensitivity is still 72, but others are like a 30 or 50, 50 or 30 around that. So as Dr. Yanagi Harasin since he explained in his presentation, uh, this is the correlation with CT value and the culture positivity. And the CT value 27 to 31 is around here. And what it's saying is that uh, in this red circle, it's still about 50% culture positive, meaning that it's still infectious, contagious, can spread the virus to others. So in summary, our case sensitivities is still over 70% even in CT value 27 to 31. So it's still low virus, but still infectious. So it is important to detect this level, okay? So this is a place where we allocate values most. Okay, so this is the last slide from my presentation. So this is about the use cases of the, of the COVID-19 testing. So as you know that what's problematic and tricky about COVID-19 is that uh, there are many asymptomatic patients. So we need to do testing outside of hospital and clinic. For example, like in non-medical field, public health, like airports, airports and borders and schools and universities and, uh, and so on. So in order for us not to stop economy, we need to do testing. And also in medical field as well, uh, we, also, we need a COVID-19 screening testing before, for example, surgeries or endoscopy procedure like a cancer screening or whatever. So in this way, the testing demand is broke. And to meet this kind of demand, I think the cheap, first, simple, rapid antigen test will be a perfect solution. And I believe that our Fujifilm highly sensitive kit can contribute in many use cases around here. Thank you for your attention. So if you are interested, please just feel free to contact me. I, I will put my contacts and the information about the kit in chat box later. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Oi, thank you for your excellent presentation and introdu introducing the technical information of the antigen test kit. Then I'd like to invite colleagues, colleague from JICA, Dr. Mitsuo Isono. He will talk about the collaborative efforts of JICA and low and middle income countries on COVID-19 testing. And I'd like to hand over to Dr. Isano. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Isano from JICA. Uh, I'm a visiting fellow at the JICA Research Institute. So today I'd like to briefly explain what we are doing to support low and middle income countries uh, to fight against COVID-19. So uh, as an initiative for global health and medicine, we JICA is taking a holistic approach based on the strong partnership and trust we have built with our partners. So this includes a, a treatment system and the digital research and diagnostic system and the prevention for the COVID-19 diseases. So for strengthening the treatment system, we are supporting to construct uh, core hospitals or providing the um, necessary, necessary major equipment such as ECMO or ventilators uh, <clears throat> for many uh, hospitals in many countries. Also, we are recently supporting to strengthening the intense care unit capacity in several countries. Uh, for the <clears throat> Disease research and alert system, we are supporting the uh, to develop the capacity of diagnostics and testing technologies uh, through providing uh, PCR test kits or machines. 
also we are uh, supporting to strengthening the quarantine and border control and early preventive measures against disease outbreaks. Uh, for the pre prevention, uh, we are promoting uh, to support the vaccine distribution or vaccine logistics, and, and also promoting the preventive measures such as providing access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene. Also, uh, we are uh, focusing on the main, mainstream in, in the infectious disease prevention and the health emergency response in the field of education, urban planning, and recognition, and so many other uh, <coughs> sectors. <coughs> so, this is uh, just a big Example in Kenya, uh, case study boosting COVID-19 testing capacity for Kemuri in Kenya. Uh, we Jaika has been a key partner of the Kenya Medical Research Institute of Kemuri since its establishment in 1979. So now the Kemuri is the among the <coughs> institutions taking a leading role in Kenya's response to COVID-19. And to support this, we provided the uh, P PCR test kits and equipment so that the Kemuri <coughs> can boost its laboratory capacity for COVID-19 testing. And this is another example, example in Vietnam. So case study expand patient safety initiatives to regional hospitals in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, uh, there are three hospitals that Jack has worked particularly closely with. These are the Batumai Hospital in Hanoi and the Fue Central Hospital in Fue and Chorai Hospital in Ho Chi Minh cities. So when the outbreak of the COVID-19 happened, uh, JICA provided support through the provision of the essential medical equipment, uh, such as ventilators and ECMOS to expand the uh, surge capacity in these hospitals. Also in Vietnam, there is the National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology, uh, we say NIHE, uh, which JICA had been working with for many years and carried out PCR tests from the earliest stage of the pandemic and shared its results promptly with the three core hospitals and other medical institutions so, so that Vietnam can easily manage the uh, COVID-19 uh, outbreak. <clears throat> also then the NIHE provided training to provincial laboratories so, so that the provincial laboratory can conduct PCR testing quickly. So this is the uh, in coordination with the government to contain the cluster of COVID-19. So these are the just uh, brief ex examples. And uh, as I told, we, we JICA supported so many countries in so many occasions for to fight against COVID-19. So <clears throat> if you have interested for more information, please contact the uh, JICA Water Research Institute here or contact the JICA overseas offices. Uh, just you can identify the, your uh, country offices through the JICA website. And also, please see the website for JICA's response to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. And this is just a, a brief explanation of what JICA are doing now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation, Dr. Isono. I hope that you are interested in JICA's activity regarding COVID-19. Now, we have finished all the presentation from speakers. So we'll move on to the Q&A session. I'd like to invite Dr. Isano again to facilitate a Q&A session. He will pick up and summarize your questions. Dr. Isano, please take the floor. Uh, okay, once again, uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And thank you very much for participating in this uh, webinar. So we already received so many questions in, that, in advance before starting this webinar and also during this uh, webinar we are receiving so many questions so uh, i'm very afraid that we cannot uh, answer to all the questions so please allow me to pick up some important question among these so first i'd like to ask to uh, some important principles regarding the uh, screening by uh, RDT antigen test kit to Professor Yanagihara. Uh, first question is, in Japan, uh, in which con condition or for which purpose these RDT are used? Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your good question. 
I, I want to make sure RDT means a rapid antigen testing without the machine. I would explain that. At first, uh, most important area is at the emergency department. So the, for emergency patients, the patient enters hospital. The patient is at the very critical. We have to start that uh, treatment as soon as possible, even with the surgery. At first, we do rapid antigen test and uh, we confirm that the negative, we just start that the operation or treatment. That is the most important area. And next, uh, we are planning to uh, antigen testing for a bar area or a restaurant area. So many people gather to drink or eat, but that's a very risk for that the cluster for uh, infections. So entering that the bar, um, before entering bar or restaurant, we do that the rapid antigen test for all guests and enter. So that in the, uh, in the restaurant or bar, that safe area, so they can drink safely. Okay, that's a point. And that, uh, and we uh, think about that uh, another uh, area for that uh, some event, uh, sports event, and a festival. Also, the many people gather that area. So we do that antigen test to confirm that the test negative. So we can prevent that the cluster of COVID-19. That uh, we, said, we, we explain that the three patterns. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. So, uh, second question to uh, Professor Yanagihara is the uh, this antigen rapid test is uh, available uh, or effective in for the high risk community or in the population with high prevalence of COVID nineteen. Oh, okay. Uh, that uh, very also bit, very good question. Uh, I'm explaining that the example for that. Uh, cluster on the cruise ship. You know that uh, we have experience the Diamond Princess, we have uh, so many patients in the cruise ship. And at that time, we didn't have rapid antigen testing. So we have to wait PCR for more than 10 days. Uh, in the meantime, the infection spread it. If we have, if, if we had the rapid antigen testing, at that time, we do that uh, uh, antigen test quickly. So we find the patient and isolation, and without uh, no, 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 that patient with isolation, so we can start much earlier than we did. So, and the other case, uh, I, I want to explain that uh, in the cluster in the hospital, uh, we experience that so many cluster cases in the hospital. Usually, uh, so we find that the patient for the isolation and that the close contact medical staff, we have to uh, ask them day off. We don't allow they work the hospital. That we have to think about that uh, they have contact, but uh, not close contact. So we have to have some stuff for the patient. So at, at that time, the, the staff uh, came to the hospital in the morning. We do the, the rapid antigen test and we confirm that the test is negative and they start to work. So we, I explained that, that two examples, that's all. Um, thank you very much. Uh, next question to Professor Anahira. Uh, so in which uh, condition can we completely replace uh, uh, antigen RDT with special testing? Or uh, in, yeah. such, in which case do we need the uh, PCR test as an additional test for the confirmation? Uh, that is very, a very good question. But uh, 
some uh, little bit difficult to answer. According to Japanese guideline, the symptomatic case, for symptomatic case, and that the uh, antigen positive. So we can diagnose patient without PCR. But that uh, depends on the situation. So I think that the uh, symptomatic patient means that the uh, high viral load. So that means that the antigen test detect. So uh, the, the, we, can, we don't use that uh, PCR test. And uh, the patient, the asymptomatic patient, um, sometimes that they, he or she has a low viral load, so it cannot detect by antigen testing. So we have to do PCR test or other test. So it's, uh, I explained that my slide, uh, antigen test for asymptomatic test, is some kind of different story, but uh, according to the guideline, a symptomatic patient for uh, the, we, we can diagnose with antigen test without PCR, but uh, uh, a symptomatic patient, we have to do PCR. This is a guideline that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, it may not good answer, but it's a real story. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next question uh, to Professor Nagisara is regarding the asymptomatic cases. So, uh, roughly speaking, uh, how many percentage of asymptomatic cases can we detect by this uh, uh, antigen rapid test? Or I think it is said that the uh, RDT antigen test can find most of the contagious cases which has the potential to infect others. Is this right? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 first question me means that, uh, so uh, please say that the first question. Uh, so I think it's very difficult to, to answer, but how many percentage of asymptomatic cases uh, can be detected by RDT antigen testing? Uh, that, uh, that depends on that uh, group of the patient. So the patient, uh, if the, we can gather that 100 people, so they don't have any viruses. So the antigen test cannot detect. It depends on the uh, group. So difficult. But I think that the, um, just I would like to answer the, your question. Uh, if that, uh, just, just I, I will explain that the, the patient with uh, asymptomatic, but without symptoms, that, uh, but uh, it, they, he or she has high viral load, more than uh, 1,000 copies or 10,000 copies that can, the antigen test can detect that the virus. So that means that it depends on the viral load. So I, I cannot say that how many percentage by uh, detecting rate, just depends on that the viral load. And that uh, next question, next question, uh, can I show, can I share that uh, slide again? Can I share? Sure? Yes, yes. Okay, um, so that question, is here. I think that uh, it's, oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I explained that uh, this slide, this slide, this slide, okay. And this, uh, I explained that, uh, okay, just a moment. So that my, the question is that the antigen test can detect a live virus and uh, RT-PCR can detect the uh, live and dead virus. That is your question, I guess. Uh, that, that is, okay. So this is uh, the yellow band, means that the uh, antigen test. And that the violet band, uh, this is uh, the live virus. 
as you can see that the most cases are overlapped. That means that the antigen test can detect a live virus. This is RT-PCR. It is not overlapped here. And as a slide is here, I explain previously, which I, I, I explain again, this is that the Velo, this is a cell assay, it is a culture assay. This is positive, means that the live viruses. Negative, means that the dead viruses. And red dot is antigen test positive, and green dot is antigen test negative. This is at the viral load PCR, a CT, CT value. You can see that the most antigen positive patients, antigen positive sample are culture positive. And most antigen negative sample are culture negative. That means that the antigen test can detect the live viruses. That is the evidence. Uh, that is my answer to your question. Okay. Thank you very much. So maybe we will miss some asymptomatic cases by RDT antigen testing. But the, those cases uh, which, which we missed by RDT antigen test are not contagious. That means that those cases uh, do not have the potential to infect others. Uh, is this right? Uh, say, it, say, please say it again. Uh, so maybe some asymptomatic cases uh, are not detected by uh, RDT antigen test. So those tests uh, who are not uh, <clears throat> found by the antigen rapid test are not contagious or does not infect to others. That that very good question. That very and very difficult to answer. Uh, I think that, uh, but uh, I cannot say clearly. Uh, some some patients, I mean, that for example, uh, some patients uh, we cannot detect that by antigen testing, and that patients at that time hundred copies, but uh, the viral load is increasing rapidly. So now the viral load is very low, but next uh, tomorrow viral load at the 10 to the 5 or 10 to the 6 so so which we that is the infectious patient so it's difficult but uh, if you if you do that uh, every day we can detect by antigen testing so that so that is the reason why i explained if you do antigen testing to control covid-19 patients so you have to do it every day that is my answer. Uh, so uh, next question is the timing of the testing. So it, generally it is said, uh, previously it is said that the uh, good timing for testing is uh, prior, from priority two days before to five days after the onset uh, of the symptom. So uh, does antigen rapid testing change this concept? Well, uh, this is uh, the same, still same. That is a um, good question. But uh, I think that uh, I cannot choose timing of testing because that the, the patient come, come to me with symptom. We can do the testing. So uh, just I, I would like to say, please don't wait for the day and two days we can you you have to do the patient will come so uh, as you as you mentioned that the, the the two days before starting the symptomatic and after five days uh, five days after a uh, symptom is that the, that indicated the high viral load so, so good time for testing, but uh, clinically, uh, we cannot choose the timing of testing. 
that is my answer. Thank you very much. So the last question to Professor Yanahihara, and also this is a question to Dr. Oi. So it seems that the positivity of the rapid antigen testing uh, depends on the viral load, as, as you explained. So are there any other factors which affect the result of the antigen, rapid antigen testing? Uh, okay, so I I answer uh, first, and uh, the Mr. Oi will answer later. So for the, the sample, so um, some uh, enzyme or some uh, kind of that uh, food, and some it's it's a contaminated that sample. It can disturb that the uh, immunoglobulin immunoreaction. So it may. Uh, Occur that uh, for the negative, and also that uh, um, a Japanese uh, Japanese paper mentioned uh, it mix uh, mix uh, very well uh, indicates that a good results. So please aid uh, your answer, Mr. Oi. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nagihara. So, in addition to the explanation from Dr. Nagihara, I think it, each brand has a, the the each procedure that we need to follow. So, basically, the, the usability depending on depending on the way you use the kit, sometimes it could affect the result. I think. But other than that, the rapid diagnostic kit is very simple and easy to use. So I think there's not the many things that affect the result, I think. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Yanagara, uh, to answer so many questions. So uh, now I would like to ask several questions to Mr. Oi. So uh, at first, so many participants concerned about the cost of this test. Mm -hmm. And some may uh, wonder if they uh, repeatedly or free, frequently use this test kit, it may more costly than PCR test. So what is this is cost for this testing? Okay, thank you for your question. So uh, uh, unfortunately, I, I cannot say the definite, definite number here, but uh, we have already uh, started some businesses in some countries. So if you are interested from attendees about the pricing, please just contact me and I can put you through to the local subsidiary or local distributor that we have in your country. So please contact me. So because the pricing sometimes varies from country to country. For example, the cost of delivery is totally different from country to country. For example, our factory is in Vietnam. So basically, our kit will be shipped from Vietnam Ho Chi Minh to your country. So, so the pricing, so please contact me. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, next question is the uh, approval by WHO or FDA, or maybe in Japan. So what, what is the situation of the approval of, to use this test kit in Japan? And or maybe uh, what is the perspective to get approval from WHO or FDA? Okay, thank you for your question. So about the regulatory status, so as I explained, what we already have is PMDA and CE IBDD. And we, what we are doing now is that uh, we are under the legislation processes is about more than 10 countries in Asian or Latin American and Middle East and African countries. And uh, we don't have a FDA, but actually we are working on WHO EUL. We are actually in discussion directly with WHO. Now we are checking what we need to do, kind of to pile up the evidence data. So that is the current status of our kit. So the VCEMAC, so we can do business in Europe. So we only have shipped some to European countries. <clears throat> Uh, thank, thank you very much. So next question is uh, uh, samples for testing. So uh, which kind of samples are, can work for this testing? Uh, like, like I think you mentioned about the nasparingia subs, 
but how about the saliva or some other samples or maybe urine or uh, even for the environmental samples? So which kind of samples are available for this testing? Okay, thank you for your question. So what about the sample? So currently, we, we do the nasopharyngeal, as I explained in, in presentation. And currently, we are working on nasal swabs, clinical evidence. And for saliva, so I think it's ideal to, do, to use the, this kind of rapid antigen test by saliva sample. But uh, I'm not really a R&D guy, but uh, there, are, there are big technical a breakthrough we need to achieve to achieve the saliva antigen test. As you can imagine, saliva is very sticky, right? So, but our like a inochromatography antigen kit is the sample froze on the strip, but sticky is sometimes problem. problem. And another one is that saliva doesn't have many amount of virus in it, so sometimes sensitivity. It cannot be higher, as higher as like a nasal swab or nasopharyngeal swab. So that's kind of the technical breakthrough we need to go through to achieve the saliva antigen kit. And as far as I know, there's not the official approved saliva antigen antigen kit in the market so far. So we want to try. Uh, thank you very much. And the next question is regarding the barrier. So. Can this uh, film system detect the variant of the COVID-19? Uh, yes, yes, we already have confirmed the three types of variants uh, that the WHO uh, uh, indicated as a variant of concerns. UK one and South Africa one and Brazil one. We have already tested and uh, test confirmed that the same performance can be achieved. And the Indian one, uh, we are going to do that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And the next question is uh, uh, waste management. So is there a special measures to uh, for the waste management of this equipment? Can can we simply simply throw away this RDT kit? Uh, yes, it's, it's nothing different from the other antigen kit. How to dispose this kit just the disposal kit as rules in your regulation. So nothing special. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So next question is uh, just, I think it's a bit difficult to answer, but uh, how, how can you increase the sensitivity of this kind of testing? Uh, uh, RDT testing or antigen RDT testing, how can you increase the sensitivity of this testing? Okay, so uh, it's, a bit difficult to answer, but uh, as far as I know, that uh, first of all, the the important thing is antibody, because I explained that uh, uh, we trap antigen with antibody. So the selection of antibody and uh, specific antibody to this COVID nineteen antigen is important. The first, the selection of antibody, and we believe that we have selected the great antibody to catch the antigen. I think that pretty much, but uh, in addition to that, as I explained that we have a silver amplification technology so we can amplify the virus itself. So our, we have a benefit over in addition to the selection of the antibody. Uh, thank you very much. So I, that, that means still Fujifilm is still working to increase the sensitivity technically? Uh, yes, yes, yes. And I think increasing the sensitivity, meaning that we can uh, expand the, our intended use to nasal swab or saliva. Because for saliva, we, we need more sensitivity. So we need to find a way. <clears throat> So uh, thank you very much. So this is again the question to Professor Yanagihara and uh, maybe to Mr. Oi. So uh, th there are some difference uh, in the sensitivity of, of PCR testing uh, by companies. Or so are, are these affect the uh, positivity or result of the 
PCR testing to find the uh, COVID-19 cases, or it, it doesn't matter. Do you mean that the difference that the sensitivity for antigen testing? That uh, I, it's, I have to think about that uh, uh, difference in sensitivity in antigen testing? Uh, maybe among in, uh, antigen testing, there is uh, differences in sensitivity by company's product. Mm -hmm. And this is the same for the PCR test kit. Uh, maybe some, there is a difference in, in the sensitivity of the PCR test kit by company. So uh, actually these differences uh, affect the uh, result of the testing. That means uh, somebody afraid that in some countries uh, there is only few COVID-19 cases. But uh, this is not uh, due to the uh, difference of the PCR testing kit or not. Okay, uh, that's a very good question. At first, I mean that uh, uh, the, the early of 2020, around that uh, uh, January and February 2020, the company uh, the made uh, antigen testing quickly. At that time, the uh, quality is very uh, variable. I mean that uh, some antigen test is very bad and some antigen test is nice. Uh, but now the company is devised that the antigen. So I think that the, um, the currently uh, you think that the antigen tests are almost good. So I, I, I think that the, we can believe that the results of antigen testing, that is my opinion. But, uh, but uh, you have to um think about some antigen tests and the indicate that the whole positive and false negative so you have to um careful you have to be, be careful with that that is my answer thank you very much yeah, I, I agree with uh, dr Nagihara-sensei so but as since i mentioned that uh, i think it's very important to validate with that same sample if you want to compare the antigen test, because depending on the sample, the virus amount is totally different. So head-to-head -head comparison is, I think, important. And the, 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 the data that I explained is about the head-to-head -head comparison using the same sample among brands. So that kind of study, I think we need to continue to filter the, 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 the any other on the market. <clears throat> uh, okay, thank you very, very much. And the, still there are several questions, but uh, we are very sorry time is running and uh, we cannot answer all the questions. So, uh, Professor Yana here, do you have any short message uh, to leave the participant? Uh, to uh, yes, please. Yeah, thank you for the, giving a chance to speak. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, PCR is that the gold standard method to detect the COVID-19. But it's, it's, I don't doubt it. But uh, we have to use that uh, PCR antigen testing. Also later, we have to use uh, antibody testing. We have to use uh, the three method of the testing to control that COVID-19 pandemic. That is my uh, last message. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, how about Mr. Oi? Do you have any brief message to the participant? OK, so th thank you again for inviting me, inviting me this webinar. So for message. So, uh, uh, so if you are interested in our product, so please contact me. And I hope that I, we can contribute to your country's response to COVID-19. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, all the participants for your active uh, <clears throat> participation to this webinar. Uh, I think we had a very good discussion, a presentation, a discussion. So today's presentation uh, clearly pointed out the 
uh, the effectiveness of the rapid antigen testing for management of COVID-19. And, and I think this uh, test kit or test system is available in, even for the low and middle income countries and may, may be a very good tool, a uh, strong tool to fight against COVID-19. So uh, if you have any interest, just please contact the physician or to check a uh, country office. So once again, thank you very much. And the session is over. And I will back to the uh, water sign. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Isano, for moderating Q&A session and concluding this webinar. And thank you very much for Professor Yana Ihara and Mr. Oi for answering lots of questions. Also, thank you very much for all participants for your active participation. I believe all participants enjoy learning and discussing about COVID-19 tests, and the knowledge will help you to fight with COVID-19. Before closing this webinar, I'd like to share information. Uh, first, in order to make our webinar program better, please provide your feedback on this webinar. The link will be announced at the end of the webinar. And it will take only a few minutes to uh, fill in the feedback survey. So your feedback is highly appreciated. And we are planning next webinar in July about response of COVID-19 by Japanese public health centers. We will invite experts for engaged in COVID-19 responses at public health centers. We will announce you at the detail by email on, or on website. We look forward to meeting you again at the next webinar. Again, thank you very much for Professor Nagihara and Mr. Oi and all the participants. And thank you and have a good day.